Hello, you're welcome to another interesting episode of Inside Abia with me, Agatha Mata. Um, this week we'll be looking at education mm. because it's one of your five bedrocks yeah. um, for anything else to thrive. The people must be educated. Yeah. You said that yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is very important for you, for them to be able to catch up with new innovations and every other thing to be digital, to grow the, their businesses. They need to be educated. So let's talk education. What has been your experience since um, inception of your administration? What have you done? What are you still looking to do? Okay. Here again, I would like to start with the benchmark. In 2015, we had just 150,000 pupils in public schools. And um, the question was why? Why do we have more people in private schools than we have in public schools? Um, two, we had Abia State University at number 97 among institutions universities in Nigeria. That's university ranking. Yes, university ranking was 97 or so. And all of that. So I said, well, first, we need to look at why our, why we have lost faith in our education system. Again, the World Bank uh, believes that if a household spends more than 25% of their income on school fees, that that household will perpetually remain in need. Hmm. Hmm. And the only way, remember, I'm creating a better life for my people. So I need more money in their pockets. So the only way to help them achieve that will be for me to find a way to bring them into the public school system. But if you are bringing people into the public school system, you must speak to quality, you must speak to infrastructure. We have done about 650, not counting the ones we are doing now, new classroom blocks. Built. Built. 650 with four model schools. Hmm. The unique thing about our model schools is that teacher, student, laboratory, library, solar-powered laboratory, solar-powered library, all of them in the same environment. Because we want to return to a time when teacher could wake up and say, ah, you are breaking bounds, go back. Oh, you are not dre properly dressed, go back. You know, because I am a product of public school. I need to capture all my children in the, in the school system. children sit down wow the experience was very very fantastic with the learning materials especially the lockers where the people sit individually and that has helped them a lot to learn very well because when you give them bench they will sit together and one may be pushing the other in struggling to sit very comfortably renovation and the construction of buildings when you look around you will see that the school is wearing a very good look. And this alone has made the parents, during the school resumption like this, you will see parents coming. I want to register my child here. Our do governor, Dr. Okeze Victor Ibazo, has equipped the school with the following uh, items. One, computer sets, generating sets, that's generator, one big one. He also gave us a lot of lockers and the chairs for the pupils. We have borehole there. We have science equipment box and our library. Constant training and the retraining of teachers. This is a workshop and the seminars. So to make sure that the teachers are up and they're doing in the school. So all these things our governor has done. I prefer this new plastic green and white chair better because it helps the children to sit on their own and concentrate. They don't disturb each other. They are always there. Their backs are there. 
everything they, they came with will be there intact. Nobody has lost any of their things. But before, when they had wooden desk, before you know it, they will come to my seat. Auntie, this my bag, my pencil, my pen. But now everybody goes home with what he, came, he or she came with. The floors of the classrooms are tiled and the seats are okay. In fact, everything, I, pray, I thank God for that. I give my thumb to the government. Because of this renovation, we cluster the pupils together. So when there is not enough classroom in the school, you see the pupils cluster. One and two will be clustered in one class. Where are you supposed to teach one separately, primary, basic two separately, and basic three separately? Because the schemes are not the same. You see them cluster together, and you teach them. How will you teach them? I don't, I, don't, I don't even know. Do you teach only primary one? Or do you teach primary two model to all of them? So it's a challenge. The building has helped us in so many ways. Because ever before now, they have not been using those classes. But now that that structure, has been erased. They are making use of it. Our primary four and primary five pupils that are there. We have many new things in our school. They gave us um, computers. They opened water borehole. We have lawnmower, cut field. They built this new building that you are looking at now for us. In our classes, we have desks. We have enough seats for the primary section. Even the desks are there. We have all these things, big generator. So they gave us all these things in our school. I like the new building. The government gave us a new building. He gave us 10 computers and a generator. He brought decks for us and some chairs for us. He, he helped us in doing all the things we need in school. I thank Dr. Victor Okeze Epazo for doing all these things for us and may God bless him and guide him to he leave the throne again in Jesus' name. In the past, this has not been like this. Some people sit on the floor to learn and the wooden the, um, desk normally break. The building was so bad. If the rain started falling now, there is no place for the children to stay. And they thank God that the governor came to our rescue to erect this new building for us. The boho is the recent one. The environment is okay. The classrooms okay. Very, very fine. Very comfortable. I like the classroom because they painted it and have good seating. I like it because the school is always clean. The new building is beautiful. I want to thank our governor, Governor Dr. Okeze Ibazo for all we have been doing in our school, for the desk and the lockers he gave us. I want to say to Governor Okeze, Boza, I am more power to his elbow. Now, the hood does not make the monk. What about my teachers? If I have teachers who can do primary four arithmetic, what do I do? So I quickly looked for collaboration and I ran and got collaborators from Australia and Bangladesh and India to come and retrain and begin a program to retrain. Why did you choose teachers. those countries? I chose those countries because. Bangladesh, for instance, is almost at the same level with us as a developing country. But they have a few things working. And my emphasis, if you remember, they are now strong on garments. So my emphasis is technical education. Can I drive in or can I have that kind of mentality to rub off on? Because a student is as good as Your the strength teacher. of the teacher. Mm -hmm. you know. So can I introduce my teachers to... You know, and then, um, so that was that. They came and um, within one year, they retrained over 1,000 teachers. So I established a continued education center. So we have to institutionalize. So there is this constant retraining. Because a lot of things are happening. Classroom management, even security, changing curriculum, and then research, analysis of feedback. What are the people saying? You know, and then this same feedback 
coming out from my continuing education center has provided a need now, which we are beginning to implement this academic year, for preschool education. Because we, we, we literally take our doors to school. Hmm. Is this spread across all the local government? All the local government. So, beautiful school infrastructure, teachers retrained with four model schools. Because I didn't have a good example of a model school. So I had to do four model schools to say to them, this, this is, is what a school looks like. You know. And then, um, where are we going from here? We are perhaps going to be the first state that will begin digital learning. Because we have acquired smart boxes for our pilot schools that can teach about 127 subjects, including tailoring. Please explain that, I don't, okay. I don't know what those, I, I've never heard that before, so. Um, we, have, we have acquired smart boxes yeah. for digital learning mm -hmm. that can teach. So this is gonna be in classrooms? In classrooms, we have trained our teachers. We had to bring Indians to now infuse our curriculum in those machines. If, the, if that piece of equipment wants to teach biology, for instance, you see the picture of a full-fledged adult, and you are teaching blood circulation, you instantly begin to see, as you mentioned, the heart pumps blood and okay. acts like a pumping machine. The heart will start pumping. pumping. And oh, you, so it, you it see the blood. you visual representation. Exactly. And you and can you recollect forget. lessons you taught five, yes. six, seven years yes. ago. Because video, Call them back. visuals don't, don't you so stay longer. So we have trained and built capacity for that. Then, what is the outcome of all these efforts? Refurbished infrastructure, retrained teachers, the output is that we have students that has taken first back to back on for four years a West African School Certificate exam really? in Nigeria. Yes, you have the, you have had the best work results. Of course, Abia statistics State. are there, and then Abia State University has moved from number ninety seven to twenty, and the second best state school. The Abia State University is one of the best beneficiary of this governance of uh, because. He has contributed to the positive ranking of, uh, of this university. At this time of economic recession, when universities are finding it difficult to meet up uh, uh, the basic demands, um, the governor reduced the school fees of uh, Abia indigents. It's unprecedented when others are, are increasing. And he has um, financially supported us so much that uh, uh, we've not had any local... Uh, problem with the unions in terms of strike because their welfare has been very generously uh, uh, supported up to this moment. We're up to date with uh, uh, salary exercise with uh, the staff. We've benefited a lot to say, at least starting from the new secretariat he's building for us. And um, I must say that's the first of its kind since the inception of Abia State University. So we are so much grateful and we immensely thank the governor uh, Dr. Okeze Ikbazu, you know, for this great story. Just before Christmas celebration of 2021, 8 out of 15 RBA youth who were given visas left for Australia to study courses such as Information Communication Technology, Civil Engineering, Public Health, Masters in Environmental Science and Management, Masters in Electrical Electronic Engineering in the following universities. Flinders University, James Cook University, University of New England, and Turin University. Recall that early 2020, Governor Iqbazu traveled to Australia to sign agreements with some universities in Australia that will enable students of Abia origin to study on scholarship as well as obtain work permits to support themselves. Governor Okeze Iqbazu is uh, a scholar and he brought uh, this experience into governance. We are able to, to secure over 100 scholarships for, for Australian universities 
and then right now we are processing about 50 of them for first, first degree and postgraduate degrees. And uh, the scholarship is actually set up to help IBS entities generally, both those who are working those in the ministry, to be able to achieve whatever they so desire in education without much stress. Honestly, words cannot describe how I feel. The day of no KZ came to inaugurate the scholarship board. I attended the occasion, so I heard everything about the scholarship board and its intentions, and I decided to apply. When the form came out, I got the form in good faith. I filled it up. I wrote the exam, the IELTS exam, and passed, and I got an email and an offer letter from the school which is my details were submitted to. So that was how everything happened. It was just like a dream or like a miracle. So I never expected such a thing because I have not witnessed such in Nabia State. Governor Okeze Bazo has the interest of his people at heart and he has showed that in several ways. And this opportunity that he has given to us, once in a lifetime opportunity, I believe that he is the best that we have had in this state. So we are lucky to have him as our governor. From the onset, I've not had any problem from my visa processing. When they booked my flight, the governor paid everything for me. So for me, it has been a successful experience. I know what it takes, you know, to have this kind of opportunity. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I feel, I feel lucky, I feel blessed. And I thank our governor in a very special way. I feel very happy. I feel very, very happy because um, Governor Okeze Fazo just made my year. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate, sir. I use this medium to encourage all Arabians. Please, this scheme is for real. I encourage everybody, both people in the diaspora, Arabians all over Nigeria should come down and enroll in this scheme. So you're doing a lot to as a scholar, you know. So this is he has a lot of passion, you know, for you know for education, of course, you know, because of his uh, background. So I like him, you know, because he wants to. Uh, uh, ensure that you know, the standard of uh, uh, education in Abia State, you know, remains we are top. The allegory of giving fish and teaching how to fish captures the whole idea behind Ekpazu's E4E, Education for Employment, a program that is conceptualized around creating employment and ensuring that education leads to employment by imbuing the youth with the technical skills that will enable them become either self-employed or sought after by others. E4E, -E, Education for Employment. Under education for employment, we have vocational studies where we have home economics, agriculture, and the rest. Then we have entrepreneurship in my school, where students are taught to do leather works. They do handbags, they do slippers, they do sandals. Then we also have here GSM repairs training. Like the last time, they learned how to repair charging ports. So this, in essence, is to help them after school, they can begin fully employed. Because the age they, that they are in is a very ac big activity age. When they are not doing anything, they create something. And that something they may create may be negative. So actually, we are pushing them to be busy Positively, we are in, in a, the entrepreneurship workshop. Here is a, where we learn how to make shoes and other things like bags, sandals, and simple shoe wears. Yeah, so we come here to learn how to do them and to use them for future use. As you can see here, we have one already done. We did this one today, so this is what we do every day whenever we come for this type of... From my table here, we have the jackknife, we have the hammer, scissors, and the shoelace. And as well, we have the perforator. Likewise, we have our sewing machine we use for sewing. And down there, we also have our filing machine. 
we use to smooth our work and other materials we have stuck right back in the store there. So we have many things we use, which the government provides, so that we use them to teach the student how to make shoes. I'm learning it because it will help me in the future. It will help me not to depend on my mom and dad in the university, or to depend on them for school fees, or provision for your pocket money. But with this, I can actually help myself there. And my kids too, I'm hoping that my kids will learn this. No, I learned that to make this will help us in future and it's going to, it's going to make us to establish and it's not going out there to look for jobs because you must not depend on the government. You might finish university and you will not be able to get a job easier. With the help of this, you can be able to feed your siblings and your family if you are the only daughter. Therefore, you can be able to feed them. I know that in the mind of Governor Ekwazikpazu, he knew that that is really hard these days. That they are outside there, there are many students, many people walking around with nothing doing at hand. And already we know that an idle man is a devil was shop. So in his mind, he was trying to equip students to give them skills so that when they will grow up, they don't have to be working from one place to another. They will use the skill they have learned to make money from themselves and not only depending on the governor, on the government to give them job, working from one place to another, but they can sit down in one place and make their own income by themselves. Our governor. His Excellency Victor Okeze Ikbazu desires that because what he has done in Aba, Aba made shoes. He's been a man who desires that Abians should go back to using their God given talents. So he's been encouraging it. He has sent people to China to learn how to make shoes. So bringing this brought it down to the secondary school level. As they are learning, they are developing interest. So the governor, our dear governor Kezi Bazo, desires that every Abian should be useful in a given field. So he, he, he is helping them to develop this interest. As a matter of fact, my teachers sometimes join in the training. So that is where we are today. So, um, on a final note on um, education, because a lot of, especially with COVID, a lot of um, e-learning, mm -hmm. so to speak, mm -hmm. had to happen, mm -hmm. where people now found out that they really didn't need to be in classrooms mm -hmm. to um, get an education. Mm -hmm. um, are you planning to incorporate e-learning into curriculum? Okay. During the time of COVID, we were one of the few states that embraced uh, what we call the radio classroom or radio teacher. We were teaching lessons. I was teaching biology. Some of my colleagues were teaching mathematics and all of that. And I'll come to radio. Where do you find the time to do all these things you're saying? But you must lead from the front. True. I, agree I have I have a good understanding of biology. Why wouldn't it? It would be nice for my children to hear me teach them respiration, teach them uh, blood circulation, teach them. You know, it would be nice. And I I had a good time. You know, and a great feedback. You are such a teacher. <laughs> I keep saying this every time you talk. You are such a teacher. <laughs> oh yes. So we, we we I think that is the way to go. Mm. We we so we developed models for that. And we are using this continuing education training to also develop sustainable models for this kind of engagement and teaching. But predominantly, we are still stuck with the contact classes. I even think that is important for development. I think it is. Um, I'd like to, again, thank you, commend you for quietly doing all the things you have done. Thank you for your patience. And thank you for schooling me. <laughs> so, viewers, we have come to another, the end of another interesting episode of Inside Abia with me. Next week, we'll be looking at some other sectors of the economy with His Excellency leading the way. 
So on this note, I say bye-bye and see you next week.